What you're seeing and indeed what you're listening to here is a reimagining of one of the most iconic reverbs of all time, the Lexicon 224. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Arturo have just released the Rev LX24 plugin based upon one of the most famous reverb units of all time, the Lexicon 224. However, they've improved upon it in a couple of significant ways, both in terms of features and also in terms of price. We'll get onto that in a moment. Now they sent this over to me to have a look at, but I wasn't required to make a video at all, but I decided to because I just enjoyed the plugin so much, but they're not a sponsor of this video. However, I do have a sponsor for this video and they are Distro. Kid. If you follow the VIP link in the description down below, you'll get 7% off an already amazing price to distribute your music. Now, before we have a listen to this reverb, and the sound is the most important thing, let's just take a quick look at the background of the original Lexicon 224. The 224 originally sold in 1978 for seven and a half thousand US dollars or more, depending on the configuration, but it was still half of the price of its nearest competitor, the EMT 250. It took off and it was really well known for its smooth decay and its long, lush, deep tail. And indeed, that's still the reason why people use it today. Now, if you look at the photos, you'll see that it comes in two parts. We have the black box which is a rack mounted unit and that's where the guts of everything happens and then you've got this cream colored remote control which would normally sit on a mixing console and that's what you'll normally see as the face of a plug-in now lexicon still make hardware reverb units they cost several thousands of dollars still and they also make some software versions which cost a few hundred dollars but you will be glad to hear that this arturia version version at launch will be selling for $69. So I've literally just thrown this onto some female and male vocals and some acoustic guitar just using the large hall B setting for all of them without making any refinements. Let's just have a quick listen to see how it sounds. You should have helped me from the start. I never thought I'd need to. And never I never thought now, if we just solo just that female vocal, I'll start in the middle of the first phrase and have a listen to the tale. You should have helped. And you can just hear how it's very long actually, but you can just how, hear how rich it is. And it's just got a really natural way of decaying there. Now it doesn't have to be that long. There's lots of settings to change all that, don't worry. But that's really a sort of a nice example of the quality of the sound um, of this unit. So how does it compare to the original 224? Well, you can see on the interface, it's got a very similar look to it. Yeah, this kind of cream colored um, remote control control here but there's a little bit of difference to the layout now you'll see that it's sitting on top of this sort of desk with some reminders of the 1980s on here and i know that immediately some people are going to say yeah it looks very nice but that's a waste of real real estate yeah and i sort of agree with that however this interface does change later on for some other parts of this and you'll see how it actually uses this space really really well but let's go through the front panel just so we can get an idea of what we can change here. It's not a tutorial, but I'll just go through the basic features. In the original unit, there was eight buttons which go across the top and they're mainly there to select the main presets for the algorithms okay well we've got the same settings but rather than have buttons for each of them it's just giving you this menu here when you click on it, it's just a drop down menu they've got the same names as they originally had small concert hall b vocal plate large concert hall b acoustic chamber percussion plate a small concert hall a i'm not going to mention the next two because they were not on some of the original units there's a little bit of confusion on the versions there but usually in the software versions they have this format room a um, 
constant density plate. They've even got the original weird ordering here. Yeah, I don't know why they had small concert hall B at the beginning and then small concert hall A later on. <laughs> no idea on that, but they've kept that. So just a different way of selecting that in case that confuses you from other plugins in the original version. But we do have a row of buttons. I'll go through those quickly. Um, you would notice as you change from one preset to another, I'll use these arrows up here, that these sliders move down here, yeah, to the sort of uh, default configurations for those presets. But you can lock that. So once you've got a sort of a setting with these sliders that you like, you can lock it with this button here. Now, as I go from one preset to another, the algorithms change, but the, the settings are the same there. Okay, so we can switch that on and off. We've also got the ability to turn modulation um, on and off for the reverb tail. We've got decay optimization, which we can turn off and on. That's a sort of um, decay optimization is a way that it changes the decay time depending on the input source, the amplitude of the input source. So that's quite useful. Then we've got this button, uh, which is Vintage 12. Now, the original um, unit um, was had 12, a 12 bit converter in there. It sounds just terrible um, for today's standards, but that's what it had. Um, and it was filtered and it it had some sort of quirks with it, some uh, noise, if you like, with it because of the conversion, okay? So if you want that sort of original vintage sound, you can have that setting. You can also then choose vintage 24, okay? Now this is 24 bit conversion, it's filtered, and you don't get so much of that sort of noise that you got from the original. And then you've got the modern um, unfiltered 24 bit converter, which is just a very, very clean sound. So we still get the character of these reverbs but we get that sort of modern clean sound to them which is a nice addition there so then moving down to the sliders at the bottom as i go through these sliders i want you to keep one word in mind okay that word is confusion if you feel confused by what I'm about to explain, just hold that word in your head because it kind of leads us into one major feature of this plugin. I'll go through it quickly. Uh, decay, okay, so this sets the timing of the reverb. Nice long one, yeah? Sorry, we're just You should playing. have helped me from the start super long there even for a small hall okay so that was up there um then we've got some um which some things which relate relate to frequency and the behavior at different frequencies so we've got the base offset okay so this offsets um the decay time for lower frequencies okay now those lower frequencies are defined by this slider here which is the crossover slider okay so you select your frequency in kilohertz there for where you sort of want the so-called bass or low frequencies to uh, end and the higher ones to begin. We, we then have a dampening control which um, sets a, a faster decay for um, frequencies above a certain point. So if you find that you had something in the tail where there was lots of high frequencies and it perhaps felt a bit harsh, you can make sure that, you know, things above a certain frequency have a quicker decay time. Okay, so those four sliders kind of have a bit of a relationship with each other, if you will. Then we have a pre-delay here. This is on many, many reverb units and it sets a little bit of time between the original source sound and when the reverb starts and that can just help to keep your original source a little bit separate sounding okay then we've got the distance uh, slider I'm not sure if this is on the original 224 but then it may have been called a different name um, but basically this is setting the perceived distance okay um, so obviously further away closer is what you're gonna have it and then you have a wet dry mix which wasn't on the original okay but we have this on most plugins now it's expected to be there and very useful it is i've got this on a bus at the moment so that's why i've got it up full all the time so that's a basic overview of you know you sort of you select one of these algorithms and then you adjust it um, with these sliders down here but you may have found all of that a little bit confusing which is why i'm glad to tell you about the next feature of this plugin oh and just quickly while we're talking about confusion let's talk about something which isn't at all confusing and that is releasing your music through DistroKid. By using DistroKid, you get to release your music directly to some of the best platforms on the planet. We're talking Spotify, iTunes, TikTok, Amazon, you know, all of the household names. And you don't need to open any accounts there because DistroKid does all of that 
for you. Now, once you've created your master and your album artwork, it's as easy as filling in a friendly form, uploading them, and DistroKid takes care of the rest all for one flat annual fee and DistroKid takes none of your royalties. Sign up with my VIP link in the description and you'll get an extra 7% off. Arturia always seem to delight me with what they put in their advanced section in their plugins. In this case, I really think it helps with that confusion. If I click on it now, you'll see that we get a very different looking interface. It uses up the space much better for a start, of course. But many of the controls we actually see here are actually the same controls we saw on the front page, but represented in a different way and in a sort of a more interactive way. We can still select our basic algorithms at the top here and change the, you know, the type of converter we're using at the top here as well. We've still got a decay slide that we can see here and we've got a wet dry mix here and if we play something we'll see a representation of that happening you should have helped me from the start so we can get a sense of what's happening with our reverb there now if we drag around this middle tool here we can see that we can both change the decay and the crossover uh, frequency crossover as well yeah so we're changing where things are happening in terms of the lower and higher frequencies and we we can also change our base offset, which we had, but we can now see how it sort of sits in relationship to our decay and, and how it's affected by our crossover as well, okay? So I think it's much more visually sort of, well, it's easier for me to understand at least anyway. So I find that very, very helpful. Now, there are some features that we don't have on the front page here, but they're incredibly useful and they sort of improve upon the original 224. Um, we do have this um, modulation um, tail control that we had on the front page but we actually have more control over it here the same with the decay optimization we've got um, the pitch shift control happening here we've got a diffusion control happening here and down the bottom we've got an input drive control to add a bit more drive it doesn't make it louder as we're listening but it adds you know a bit more of that sort of drive that you would get from a transformer um, we've got a high pass here which is just super super useful I always use a high pass as many as you will know I hope you're all using them as well on your or reverbs let me know in the comments down below if you're not and why using a high pass helps to get rid of the mud f that you traditionally get with reverbs especially these types of reverbs as well okay now if you really want to sort of help get that reverb out of the way of your main vocal so it's not masking it we have a ducker included okay so this is a way of using compression to suppress the reverb while the main source in this case a vocal is sort of happening Happening. okay so if we switch that on you would just set a threshold if I was now to play the the vocal it would be it would diminish the reverb but keep it much more quiet while she's singing you should have helped me from the start and then we get the tail of it when the singing goes away there. So we've got ratio and release controls like you would on a compressor there. Really nice to see a ducker included with a reverb. It means you can get pretty much everything done here with one plug-in um, with your reverb. We've also got the ability to use a side chain for that as well. So another source, in other words, um, to determine when the reverb is suppressed. Okay, as well as a ducker, we have a gate, which also has the side chain ability and also this tremolo control okay so this uh, sort of um gives us uh, some mod a modulation sort of effect on the reverb okay so then we have a on the master section we have the ability to add some brightness some stereo width and also just control the overall reverb level so there's not much point in a plug-in like this if it doesn't represent the sound of the original unit now i don't have a lexicon 224 but i've heard it many times and i've also used a gazillion plug-in versions of it as well and this stands right up there with them it does have that wonderful sort of rich sounding tail to it and that's what I'm after in a plug-in like this so I'm very very happy with the sound of this now once you have got the sound you want if you're going to use something regularly then usability is so important and I think that R2 have really nailed it here with the usability okay I just think that the way they've sort of taken the original concept 
concept but just rethought it to help you is so good lastly if even if those things are good if you can't afford the plugin then well you won't have it will you i think this is very affordable at 69 dollars in fact i don't even know why you're still here let me know in the comments down below if you've gone ahead and decided to buy this plugin i'll give you a thumbs up now i reckon you should watch this video next it's really really good